Hello and welcome to Murder Analyzed. I'm Christina Moore. Now today's case is a Russian case, um, Southwest Siberian um, Russian case, and it was reported actually by the Mirror newspaper in December 2020. So it's quite a new case. There's other reasons why I can't really say much about this case because one, it's Russian, and there's not a lot of information that comes out about this case. So for now, what I've got is what it is actually. And I've really only got that much because of the Mirror newspaper and I'll mention more about him at the end and especially in my notes, uh, the reporter that reported on this case. So as I've said, this case is shocking. It is horrendous. It is um, probably the one of the most disturbing cases that I've ever read in my time of working within the law, which has been many, many years. And um, so I, this this case, there's a serious warning that goes out with this case because of the content and because maybe that, you know, once you've heard this case, it may be more difficult for you to forget about it. So if this sort of case is not for you, then switch off now. So I've, I, I've, ha I've said before about this accent of mine, which gets in the way of pronunciations of names and stuff like that most of the time. So with this case, due because it's Russian, and um, I don't want to be disrespectful, really, to anyone, especially this family, by pronouncing this name really badly or wrong. So it will be written um, in the case notes and in the first bit of the case that you can see. But really, the case is about this two-year-old child and his name is uh, Dimmer. He um, had two loving parents and they were uh, Maria and Dimitri. And, you know, happy, normal family. Um, and they had grandparents on both sides. And I think they wanted to go to work while they was going out, the parents. So they asked the grandparents to look after the child. Now, this is where this case starts to get bad. So we've got a two-year-old. Now, now most of us know what terrible twos are like, or we say terrible twos, don't we? And you've got kids screaming and shouting for nothing because they're kids, and this is what two-year-olds do. So these loving parents have dropped Dimmy off to the grandparents' house while they went out. They was only gone a few hours, I think. When they returned a couple of hours later to collect their son, they found like charred clothes and stuff of his out in the snow. Because we're talking now, it's really cold in Siberia. And they was a bit worried. They thought, you know, well, what could, you know, they, what would you think? Would you think, oh, you know, something's happened to his clothes and they've, they've just chucked him out? When they went in to try and look for their son, you've got the grandparents so intoxicated. Now, it says here, drink, but I'm not so sure when you, when you actually see what happened in this crime. I mean, it could have been other things, but at the, at the time, it, it, and it stated that especially the grandfather was so drunk. So now you've got Maria, the mother, searching this house for her two-year-old child. She can't find him. She goes outside and outside, out the back, is the burnt body of her two-year-old son. So you can imagine <laughs> what they're thinking now. They've immediately rung the police to come to this house. And so I think the facts from that come out was that the grandparents had had this boy for a couple of hours. He was continuing to cry and cry, probably because you've done nothing for this child. You know, really, if you're intoxicated, he's crying for a reason. I mean, this is what they're saying. He, he was crying and crying and crying. So the grandfather strangled him, but he didn't leave it at that. They had 
and it's not like the ovens that we have here they had this big oven I can it you know and what they done they undressed this child partially and put him in the oven and cooked him and then literally when he was done through his remains this burnt body out into the snow and went back inside carried on like nothing had happened you know the grandparents were 52 the grandfather was and I think the grandmother was 48 and the parents had trusted these to look after their boy the grandparents of this child and this is what they'd done to him so when I say this is a horrific crime it's horrific for many many reasons not just because what they did to him you know strangled him and cooked him I mean we don't even know if he was alive when he was chucked into that scalding oven really which you know we just don't know I think the path I just we, we haven't got enough information and then when he's done just to chuck him out into the snow and, and leave him and then you know then what's going to happen then no one's thinking what's going to happen these parents have come back to find this this must be the most traumatic thing I think for anybody one that you've already lost your son but then to know that the parent has done it to their grandchild it's a horrific crime this and I think when he was the grandfather was um, arrested on suspicion of murder and um, he was um, taken into um, custody and he said and saw <laughs> Satan so this is what he's saying the grandfather when he was detained uh, Alexander the grandfather was his name and he was 54 and he was um, so what they've done I, I think what he tried to say now or give a defense because I don't know Russian law and um, you know I deal with English law uh, New York law um, American law and um, Australian law I don't deal with Russian law so I don't really know their defences, but I would say they're very similar to our defences in this country, what we have. So I think, you know, being intoxicated in this country wouldn't be a defence for that sort of murder. <coughs> to say you saw Satan, you could say um, he was after a defence, wasn't he? So I think with the defence, or I think what he was going for, or what his defence team would have been going for when they put forward a um, plea, I suppose, they would have put through because he said he saw Satan, Satan in, in the boy, just because this boy was crying too much. The boy did nothing else. Um, I suppose it would have been diminished responsibility. Uh, and then with the crying, it could have been provocation. Now, the reason I... The reason I say about this is because when I read this case, there was a case I think in the 1980s, a couple of cases actually in the 1980s, and one of them really is a provocation. So it was the murder of a child, a 17 day old child that was crying and crying and crying. And because the father couldn't stand the crying, he uh, killed the child. Um, so and even in this country we have defences like that and I mean that case um, was held and he um, was charged with manslaughter and not murder um, for killing your own child because they're crying now um, so I don't I don't know whether Russia has these same sort of partial defences I would assume they, they do but because I don't know it I can't really question it and plus, because now he's only been charged with this and he's waiting to go to trial, or if he has gone to trial, we haven't found out yet. But I'm going to email some people and see if I can find out exactly what's happened to this 
um, within this case in more detail um, and see if we can come to some conclusion with this case. And I think it was Will Stewart who, so we are talking about a country that you, you really it's difficult to find out things on. And But I just wanted to highlight this case and highlight it for a couple of reasons. One, because it's just a, a, a terrible case and, and you know, um, this is what's going on out there in the in the real world, all over the world. You know, there, there's murders, and people will say to me, "Oh, you know, how do you know so many murders?" Well, I think, you know, I think the job that we do, and even the job that I do apart from uh, YouTube and everything else, is about the material we need. You know, there's no lack of material um, when you're writing or well, in when it comes to murder. So let's talk about this defences in this country and then I shall explain to you about the, the cases that when I read this case brought me back all them years ago to some of these cases and, I, and, and to tell the truth and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you I didn't agree with the outcome of the case that I'm going to talk about I, I didn't but you know it's not down to me um, there was a jury and, and um, but I, for me I didn't agree with it but I'm not saying that the man that did that is the same as the man that killed two-year-old Demi. But the circumstances about this crying that can provoke you to do harm to a child, you know, I think we have to be very careful here when we look at it. And, and that's why it's only, it's, um, I, I mean, provocation, I think, has been in the law, I think, since the 17th century. So, you know, it's been around for a long time. As we see more and more cases, and you know, it's not just in this country and in Russia that you're seeing these cases, they're all over the world. So, um, provocation is one of the special defences, and it's of murder, which um, effectively reduces the verdict for murder to manslaughter. Now, with manslaughter, you can do as little as 18 months, sometimes you can get out on time served. So, it depends on what it does. Sometimes, though, you can get up to 15 years. It depends, though, on the judge and on the case and on the um, the circumstances around that case. But that is what provocation is about. It's this partial defence that will then reduce the sentence from murder down to manslaughter. And, you know, as I said, it's got a long history, you know, history in English uh, law, and it, it does date back from the 17th century. And I think uh, the Homicide Act in this country, and I'm talking about England now, uh, 1957, I think it's section three, is um, is where you'll find provocation. Now, the case that I would want to talk about alongside this case, when this is what this crime of Demi Demma reminded me of, or Demma reminded me of, it's the case of R versus Dow Doughty. Uh, it's a 1986 case. Now, I am going to put the, citation, the citations of the case up in the notes if you want to have a look at this further. But this case was about a murder of a 17-day-old baby, a UK case this is, um, who was persistently crying. Now, 17 days, uh, babies cry. And they can cry for many, many reasons, you know, they're hungry, um, dirty nappies, you know, colic, or sometimes they can cry because they can feel something coming from you. So if you're stressed and upset, your child would usually be stressed and upset. And this father was looking after his child and because he, he was crying and crying and crying, he says um, that he killed him instantly. He just lost control and this is what prov provocation is. And it was this instant loss of control. Now provocation in that way has changed a little bit now you know, due to some other cases I think that we put on there on here before I think the Alawalia case is about provocation and stuff like that. Um, so I think you know this, this, this stuck in my mind there's also another case that sticks in my mind about this sort of thing and um, it was around about the same time as this when you had two very intoxicated people um, I can't remember the case, so I can't even find it actually. I have to, I've got thousands of cases to look through, so I'll have to try and find it. 
but it was an English case and it was around the same time and it was about um, a young couple that had, had this baby and they were high on drugs and drink and they said they accidentally put the baby in the microwave and microwaved it alive. So there's a lot of these cases, but again I keep saying to defence, if you're going to use intoxication or drink or drugs or anything else as a defence, it's just not going to work. This man, what I'm talking about now, Doughty, he was not intoxicated at all. He just said that this reaction of this child crying made him, I think, I think he picked the child up and he smashed the child into his legs, I think, and broke its back. Or through it, I think, and through it. There was, there, you know, it, it was an instantaneous thing. Now, I know, and when I read this case, and I was doing this, you know, this case in 1986, I was shocked at this, because, you know, we're mothers. You know, we've, you know, I don't know if, if women have got more tolerance than men, but, you know, if, if mothers started reacting like this just because your child was crying, we wouldn't have any kids left, you know. I don't know what your kids were like, but my kids, you know, were certainly screaming spoil probably but um you know you ne never pro crossed my mind in any instant to hurt these children in any way and i you know the majority of us you know 99.9 percent .9 of us men and women would not do this to their child so i could never really understand this case but if you want to look at the whole case and read the whole case of citations on there for you to read so the words in the Homicide Act, when it relates to provocation, uh, and they're not qualified as what you can what can amount to uh, to provocation. So as long as it's human, okay. So the action, um, and it can either be the action, like with um, the Doughty case, where the action was the baby crying, but it can also mean words. So someone that's continually be been uh, bombarding you with threats or um, derogative remarks to where you lose your temper so badly that you react instantaneously and that's but it has to be a human so you know human actions or words and which causes sudden temporary loss of control and that's really what provocation is about so under Section 3 of the Homicide Act 1957, um, the repeal bit of it, so where on a charge of murder um, there is evidence that the jury can find that the person charged was provoked. So in that case he was provoked. Now whether the, um, I don't know if Russia has the same law of provocation but they'd have something very similar. Most laws all over the world are, qu are quite similar to where they would see a baby crying as provocation to provoke someone enough to kill. The difference is, I think, with the Russian case and this case, is that in this case, the man done it, killed the child the way he did, and left it. I think with the Russian case, the sadisticness of it, he strangled the child, they undressed the child, or partially undressed the child, put the child in an oven and cooked it. So where, where's, where does the provocation end? So I think in that case, they probably, even if they had provocation on this murder, what we're talking about now, we, we, there's no way they would get it on provocation or they shouldn't, but as I say, I'm not legally trained in Russian law um, but in our law even under provocation the minute you've gone that far the minute then you've done something else which is so out of reach of this instantaneous loss of control which someone um, you know like you in that situation may have done the same I think in in this Russian case there's no way that any court in this land would find provocation in that. There, there's just no way, because the act 
of the murder was too severe for that instantaneous loss. And if you've murdered someone by strangulation, and strangulation, and uh, I think on a child, it wouldn't take very long, but it's done, you'd have remorse, you'd stop, you, you, you would calm down. The point where they then put him in the oven is the point where then it's, it's not going to be provocation in any way. And so crying, I think, the defence or the partial defence in this country even, when you said it was because the child was crying, but the, the act was too severe for it to have ever been done that. And I think that would probably be the same in Russia. As I say though, I'm not Russian legal trained. So I think his other thing, what he said, um, Alexander, the grandfather in this case, was that he saw Satan in the boy's face. So when you automatically then, as a lawyer, you're thinking, or as a prosecutor, you would know that this man is going to go for a defence of diminished responsibility, meaning at the time of that murder, he didn't have the capacity to understand what he was doing was wrong. But that in this country, you wouldn't really get that because if you was on drugs or drink, that's not really an excuse. And again, the strangulation, yes, okay, you could think, but then to put someone in an oven and do what they did, and then to when he was cooked, chuck him outside. It's, a, it's the longevity of this. It's a couple of hour murder here really going on. And knowing that your son and daughter-in-law are coming back to pick this child up. So something is seriously wrong with this, these grandparents. It doesn't really say much about the grandmother at the moment it just looks like he's the one that's been charged, or they've both been charged, but he's the one that they're really focusing on for this murder. So I think in the end, with this case, I mean, <laughs> what else can you say, really? There's not much, you, could, you know, this case, I think, is one of the cases that leaves you speechless. It left me speechless when I was reading it. And I'm so glad, you know, that this paper brought this out. So all credit has to go to them for that because any cases from Russia are, are, are really difficult to get out. There are a few of the real serious killers out there from Russia and believe it, they've got a lot of serial killers. Um, and they're, um, some, most of them are very sadistic killers as well. But this case I think was so shocking because it's the grandparents that did it. And so this is why I wanted to talk to you about this case and make you aware of this case. And I will keep you updated on what goes on in this case. The defence or partial defence of provocation in some way or another will be there because people don't always murder for certain reasons, you know, for the, the reasons that we think they have. So this is there to be used as that. I don't think this is going to be used at all in this Russian case. I think this is a shocking case. It's a case that this man needs to go to prison for a long time because if this man can kill his own grandson in such a terrible way by strangulation and burning this body in an oven and then actually then not just leave him in the oven I mean when you think about it he's took him out of the oven and, and chucked him into this into the snow freezing cold snow and just left him there for the family to find you know as I say, this case is, is Russian and I will try and keep you updated on it and what, what happens and, and what actually happens legally um, to this, this man. So anyway, finally, uh, thank you for watching our videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. As I always say, thank you for watching. Until the next time. Bye-bye.